Rapid feedback loop in the development life cycle is super important and useful. Nothing is more rapid than local feedback, but it doesn't replace CI, things like GitHub Actions. Continuous integration, CI, is great for running tools like Linter and building the project. However, it can be frustrating to only get feedback after a commit, push, and then waiting for all those events and triggers and GitHub Actions to run. Plus, you might not notice until much later on, so you've kind of moved on to your next task and hours could have gone by. What if you could get near instant feedback? Before you commit, yes, before. Well, during your commit. You'll see what I mean in a moment, but it will prevent the commit from committing, from completing, if the local checks don't pass. This is made possible with a tool called Husky. Their tagline is, Git hooks made easy. Woof. And it is really made easy with Husky. And I'm going to show you in a few minutes on how to do this. But please note, local Git hooks do not replace your CI checks because the user can skip these local hooks. They shouldn't, but they can. The way I like to think about it is, Git hooks is a better developer experience, a better DX. They're similar to client-side validation. It's a better user experience, but client-side validation is no replacement for server-side validation because client-side validation can also be skipped. You see where I'm going with this? Let's be honest, if it's not automated, we'll forget to run it. And as you'll see in this video, I might have forgot to run a few commands as well. And by adding Husky and doing a commit, you will see these commands will run and I should have fixed these things a long time ago. So we'll install Husky and add linter to the pre git commit hook. And we'll be made aware of some linting issues before the commit completes. I will be using NPM, but they also have docs for PMPM, yarn and bun. Who comes up with these names out of curiosity? I'm just super curious. Let me know in the description below. And if you prefer to follow along by reading, I do have a blog post on this as well. Link in the description below. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to my Substack. I am releasing blogs every couple of days and also notes, which is their equivalent of kind of Twitter. I'm trying to do more technical focused content on there as well. And I will be starting a weekly tech tips newsletter focused on open source. Right, let's get started. So I have got the repo rater Eddie Hub project and we do have a link command. If I go to the package JSON, you can see we have got a link command, but because this is not running on a GitHub action, we can open the uh, workflows directory and we're not running it on any hook. This probably hasn't been running in a long time. So I'm pretty sure we've got some errors there. I mean, what do you think? Scale of one to 10? What are the chances of having some errors? I think it's probably like 11. I'm pretty sure we got some, but let's install Husky and find out. I mean, we could run npm run lint, but what's the fun in that? Let's install Husky first. So if we do npm install save dev Husky. Okay, so we'll see our package JSON has now been updated and we've got Husky there as well. And you can do this setup that I'm gonna show you manually, but I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend using their init command. So now we've got it installed, we can use mpx Husky init. There's no output on the terminal. However, we now have a Husky directory here. But before we go check the Husky directory, let's have a look at the package JSON again. You'll notice that in the script section, we also have an extra line that's been added and it's prepare Husky. Unlike the other NPM commands, we will not be running this command ourselves. It's a hook for NPM and it will run when we do an NPM install NPM CI. So locally, this hook will get set up with the users git hooks. So let's have a look at the Husky directory. We've got this pre-commit file and in here it's gonna run npm test. But I actually wanna change that to be npm run lint. And you can have more, so we could have npm test as well if we want, but for now we just want one command. So this is all set up and done. And if you're cloning the project, it's gonna get set up for you as well. Like I said, when you run npm install npm CI. So what we're gonna do here is let's do a commit. So if I do a status or I can use what's on the side here as well. And we do want to also add probably a workflow for this. But before we get to that, let's have a look at the status. Okay, uh, I wanna add those files. I'm gonna add Husky. And now if I do a git status again, you can see I've got those files. So if I do a commit, as I normally would, and I could do a dot at the end, but I really don't like that. Sometimes extra things get included. I've got a whole other post on that. You can have a look at later. So let's say we're gonna add a feature and we're gonna say Husky pre-commit hook. 
hit enter. And now it's not gonna do the commit just yet. It's asking for my password because I use GPG keys. But if you'll notice, it's come up with warnings on the lint, but no errors. So actually it was gonna pass and it was gonna ask for my password so it can do a commit, but at least I've got some output and I can see these warnings. If there was an error, then the commit would not go through and it would stop here with an error. So this is really, really interesting. I think adding value to a project is by automating the commands they already have. You don't have to install or set up any automated testing or linting. They might have those already, they probably do, but they're probably not running on a pre-commit hook. If the tests take 10 or 15 minutes to run, then you probably don't wanna run them on a pre-commit hook. However, Linter is pretty fast and build is pretty quick as well. I think those are important to make sure that everything is working well and get that feedback instantly before notifying people there's a pull request being raised, but a GitHub actions failed. I did say I'd mention a way to skip these hooks and I don't know if I should because I don't want many people to use it, but I'm just gonna press up in my command and I'm gonna show you. So when I did this, it had those warning outputs, but if I don't wanna do that, I can put an N flag and now it will go straight to my GPG key password and do the commit. So if I cancel that, you can see there's no output error because with the end flag, it skips those. Please don't use that because it's just gonna fail on CI and you're still gonna get feedback. I think you're delaying the problem. It's better just to fix it and get it sorted. Uh, and then your pull request will be able to be reviewed, hopefully with no other failures. Please use this flag of caution because I think it can cause a problem, a bigger problem later on. So what happens if we did wanna run the linter on CI, which I highly recommend, like I said, the hooks do not replace CI. Well, what we can do is we can create a new file in the workflows folder and we can call it linter and we'll say YAML. And what we're going to give it a name, I just think we call it linter. This is what will show up on the uh, GitHub Actions page. And we'll say the trigger is for on, we are going to have uh, on push and the branch is going to be main. And then we also want to do it for a pull request as well. And we'll, again, we'll do the same. I'm gonna duplicate that line and bring it down here. There we go. Okay, and then we're gonna have some jobs run and actually probably just one job. I've called it test, no, we just call it lint. Okay, and we're gonna say it runs on Ubuntu latest. I know people say, oh, it should be tied down to a version, but it doesn't get updated and then you end up with other problems. So, you know, that's a debate we could have another time. And in this job, the steps we're going to have, we're going to say uses, we want to check out the code first. It doesn't check it out automatically. We'll use version four, which I think is the, the latest. And then after we have, you know, the code has been checked out, we want to add node. So if we use actions and then we say set up node, then these are all official via GitHub. If I save that, it should fix the indenting, it does. And then after that, we want, oh, we should probably specify which version of Node. We can just specify here, Node version, and we can say latest. I think it might use latest by default if you don't specify anything, but I'd rather specify it. And the next thing we wanna do is we want to install dependencies. And so we can do that, oh, no, not dash. We can do that by running npm CI. And then the next step and the last step, you can see how straightforward this is, is mostly copy and paste between any project, is we want to run the linter, which is npm run linter or npm run lint. There we go. And now that will run on the GitHub Actions. Oh, I've messed the indentation up here. That needs to go in one. That needs to go in one, there we go. So we can also commit that to. So if I do a status, we can see we've got this extra file. So I'm gonna add everything. I'm happy with all of those files. And then let's do a status and I'm gonna do a commit. I know I'm gonna get some warnings, but there are warnings, not errors. I will fix those later on, or you can help fixing those as well. We are gonna say feature husky run linter on pre commit hook plus GH action. I suppose it's quite a long commit message. This is, these are quite difficult. It will get truncated and put into the description. I can just say, I can move the word hook. Run linter pre-commit plus GitHub action. Okay, so I am doing this to main and you should do this in the branch normally, but just to save time, I'm gonna run it here. You can see there were some warnings. We'll see them in a second. If I type my password in, you can see the warnings and it has done the commit. So that's perfect. And I should have done the pull first, but hopefully no one else has done anything to the repo. Let's have a look. Let's push it up and see. I don't know, main might be protect protected. Uh, let me see. 
Okay, I'm out of out of date a bit. Let me fix this. This will probably fail as well. It did fail because our branches have diverged. And that's fine. We can fix that with a rebase. But remember, don't rebase any historic commit on a branch or shared. A main is shared, but I will only rebase um, my new commit that no one else has got. So it should be okay. And I will never force push because that's where problems start. So you see me on Twitter saying, I don't use rebase. I very rarely use it. I never force push. So if we do git rebase origin main, and you can see if I do a log, you can see my commit is still the last one and we didn't we didn't change any of this. This commit still happened on June the 30th and today is July the 14th. Okay, so now we can go git push origin main, asking for my GPG key as well, or my, my SSH key actually. And now it's been pushed. Now it's been pushed. If we go to the actions, you can see the linter is running and it passed. So it is also running on GitHub Actions. And the great thing is no one can bypass that. So even if they use the minus N or dash N flag, they won't bypass that. So it's still, it's still running, which is great. And all the other jobs and actions are, are triggering, which is correct. So I think that worked pretty, pretty well. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you want to come and geek out with me on real world projects, link in the description below to the Eddie Hub Discord and our open source projects.